Entering the offseason, we expected as much as 40% of the Washington Commanders roster to be new faces compared to the 2023's version. So far, the team has signed 11 players, Zach Ertz, Dorrance Armstrong Jr., Tyler Biotish, Frankie Louvu, Austin Eckler, Brandon McManus, Nick Allergretti, Clinton Farrell, Marcus Mariota, Dante Fowler Jr., and Jeremy Chin. So if you do the math on that, 11 divided by 53 is 21%. Do 11 plus 9, that's 20. 20 divided by 53 is 38%. So we're already almost at 40% and the commanders are far from finished. They've been just going on an absolute spending spree. They came into the offseason with the most cap. They have all those draft picks. This is a team that disappointed last season. On paper, we knew that they had a good roster, tough schedule, but they just didn't get the production that we thought they would. The biggest signing for the team so far has been Austin Eckler. Of course, the past couple of seasons since 2021, he has the most touchdowns by running backs in the NFL. He's also one of the best pass catchers in the league in 2023. Eckler had 21 first downs via reception, which is a lot, especially considering he had the high ankle sprain and he missed a bunch of games and was limited. Eckler, he's got good vision. He finds daylight. He is going to be 29 in May, but he hasn't shown any signs of slowing down with his speed and acceleration. He's also very slippery after the catch. He runs bigger than his size. He's one of the strongest backs in the league. He just runs like he's six foot one, six foot two, Derrick Henry type of size, but he is just a normal size running back. But overall, Adam Peters, of course, he comes over from the 49ers where he was an executive. A lot of people said he was the best at what he did in the league, and he has not been passive at all. He's been signing faces after faces for this Washington team. Eckler, the past three seasons, has gone over a thousand yards. He's actually done it overall in four of the five past seasons. And overall, Eckler, he's going to be a big time weapon, a big time piece to this new commander's offense. We're still waiting to see who the quarterback's going to be, but I feel like they'll probably do that with the second overall pick versus free agency because they already signed Mariota and Mariota he's a good backup but he's not a guy that you're going to start over the second overall pick on day one it just wouldn't make a lot of sense probably going to serve a similar role to what the Eagles use Mariota as behind Jalen Hurts I think my favorite signing though wasn't even Austin Eckler it's going to be Jeremy Chin it's about five million dollars one year deal so there's just nothing to lose here Chin he finished runner up to Chase Young for rookie of the year entire career honestly he has been playing in the box his first two seasons were where we saw the best of Chen. He had 224 total tackles. He finished with eight tackles for a loss, 10 quarterback hits, and 10 passes defended. Chin's also very good at blitzing. He can cover tight ends and bigger slot receivers. He's just very physical in the run game, which of course is something that the commander just desperately needed. They need a guy that can come up and make tackles and hit players and just make big time plays. Washington's defense struggled with that. I mean, they do have Cameron Curl at safety, who I like a lot, but they need someone next to him. And they also do need help in the secondary. Kyle Fuller is a free agent, but we'll get into that later on. In terms of defensive ends, Armstrong and Farrell, not to mention Fowler, who was just a recent pickup. These guys are going to slide in as the top defensive ends on the roster. Of course, we know that the commanders traded Montez Sweat and Chase Young for draft capital and to save some money. So these are going to be the guys that replace them. KJ Henry and Andre Jones are still developing. Of course, they'll mix in at times. Times. The commanders just desperately needed pieces that can get after the quarterback. They struggled. We also saw Jonathan Allen, who does have a huge cap hit in 2024. He could be a potential cut candidate. But I find it hard to believe a player that's made the Pro Bowl two of the last three years ends up being cut to save some money. It could happen. But the commanders just desperately need players that can get after the opposing QB. Quarterbacks had just too much time in the pocket to make plays. And especially with their secondary not being that great, you put those together. And that explains why the commanders had one of the worst defenses in the league last last year but they picked up Frankie Louvu linebacker is another position that the commanders just have struggled with they've been investing money and draft capital into it but overall they haven't been able to find the right pieces they also have one of their better linebackers in Cody Barton who's a free agent this is a team that overall they don't have any must bring backs I would say Cameron Curl is the closest one to that but I think they could get away with letting him go especially since they just picked up Jeremy Chin before Louvu three-year 36 million dollar contract that's a very reasonable deal the commanders they have all this money but they're not overpaying for free agents which is the biggest thing for them adam peters is as smart as it gets he's brought over plenty of big time free agents for the 49ers he's also drafted very well of course the trade lands trade is something that stings but they still found brock purdy in this last pick of the seventh round which kind of erases everyone's thought on that yeah luvu he was actually the 19th best free agent according to pff so clearly he's a big time player and he's gonna upgrade this 
linebacker core a lot for the team. 236 tackles, 12 and a half sacks, an interception, a return for a touchdown, and three forced fumbles over the last two seasons. He's going to be a big time piece for this Dan Quinn led defense. In terms of Brandon McManus, he's replacing Joey Sly, who was here the last two seasons. I don't think there's much to say about him. I mean, McManus, he's a reliable kicker, and hopefully he can continue to be that for the commanders. Mariota, to me, was the perfect fit. Sam Howell, he's just too talented to be a backup quarterback, which explains why the commanders are going to end up trading him to a team that wants to use him as their starter. Potentially the New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers isn't getting any younger. I could see how sliding in for Rodgers, similar to what Jordan Love did for Aaron Rodgers, of course, you know, two or three years, whatever he was there, and then he ends up coming in. I could be the thing for Sam Howell. And since I'm on Howell, I actually am a believer in him. I didn't think Eric Bieniemy's offense fit his skill set. There was just too much passing. The O-line sucked. They couldn't run the ball. So which is why it's unfortunate, but being quarterback in the NFL, it's more often than not where you're drafted versus anything else because how if he had walked into a better situation i think he could have been a special player but if he does go to the jets we know the jets have weapons an elite defense good coaching but they are still trying to upgrade their offensive line which is something to monitor but they've got a couple of years to do it before how would be the guy mariota he started 61 games for the titans went 29 and 32 overall he has started 40 games in his career so for the commanders to have a backup that's had a ton of experience that was an early draft pick that's one heisman he's going to be able to mentor either Jaden daniels or drake may whoever they decide to bring in i just don't see Mariota as a starting level quarterback if for example jacoby Brissett was brought back i'd be like yeah just start him until the rookie's ready but it's just not going to happen where Drake Mayer, Jaden Daniels is benched behind Marcus Mariota because they're going to come in as already better players. Another free agent pickup that I think is a lot of fun is Zach Ertz. He goes 6'5", 250. He's been in the league for 12 years. Of course, he was a second round pick back in 2013. Ertz has appeared in 151 games. He's got 113 starts, 709 receptions, 7,434 yards, and 46 touchdowns. I don't think Zach Ertz is the most talented player in the world. I still think the commanders are going to draft the tight end without question but the thing is experience when you have a rookie quarterback you have a new coaching staff a new owner you just want guys that can come in and can make plays and know how to get it done so i do like the Ertz pickup it's also pretty cheap he's going to join a tight end room of john bates cole turner and amari rogers logan thomas was cut earlier in the offseason so Ertz is just another pickup that a guy that can make plays he's also very familiar with Cliff Kingsbury's offense of course because Ertz was with the Cardinals so it just makes a lot of sense with the experience but the biggest thing for the commanders isn't even free agency of course free agency is always important but you win and you lose in the NFL through drafting the commanders have nine picks which means that they are going to add in potentially nine players or maybe they end up using some of those picks to move up which i would recommend personally not that i'm an nfl executive but you want to get the best players possible and the best players in the draft more often than not or higher up i'm not saying the commander should trade up to number one but i do think they will trade up a couple of times and just make sure that they get the guys that they want and don't miss out with the second pick to me is drake may he did have a regression season but when you lose two of your starting players to the nfl at receiver one of them being josh downs who was a huge target of his it makes sense the carolina the Tar Heels just don't have the best overall roster if he had played for example at lsu with brian thomas jr and malik neighbors then we'd be talking a lot differently about Drake May. A lot of people in the NFL world that know as much as anyone else saying that Drake May would have been the number one overall pick in last year's draft over Bryce and over CJ. And considering Bryce was a Heisman winner, CJ Stroud was an incredibly ready quarterback. I don't know why Drake May wouldn't go number two here. He's 6'4", 230. I think he actually came in at 223 officially at the combine, which is still 13 pounds heavier than Daniels. The only concern that I have is the tape. For those of you that watched it, there is some mechanic issues. I think May gets rid of the ball slower than a lot of people realize, but I think those things could be cleaned up with good coaching, and you just can't pass on the size, the strength, and the ability, the arm talent. Drake May has a cannon, and once he gets that release sped up, I mean, he's just going to be a problem at the next level. Durability, to me, goes a long way, 
Bryce Young absolutely was probably the best prospect, but he was smaller and we weren't sure if he would be able to last. And even though he did, just taking those unnecessary hits is going to be something to watch out for. I think Daniels did a good job of in the second half of avoiding those, but Drake May, he's just built like an NFL quarterback. He reminds me a lot of Justin Herbert. Imagine the teams that could have had Justin Herbert and what they would have given up to do it. So for the commanders just to be there at number two after a down season, they're going to be able to speed this up quickly. The Texans had the second pick. They got CJ Stroud. Then they moved up to number three. They got Will Anderson Jr. D'Amico Ryans was a defensive minded guy. I think the fit is just too hard to pass on. It makes too much sense. The commanders, they also have two picks in the second round. They've got 36 and 40. And then they've got 67, 99, 101, 138, 178, 222. Washington, they're going to be able to add in a big time receiver and an all time great receiver class. They're going to be able to get their QB and a very good quarterback class. And then, of course, this free agency class, they've added in a lot of good starters. These aren't just mid solid players. These are big time guys. I can't wait to see what the commanders do next season. They are going to have to make a decision on Kendall Fuller, Curtis Samuel, Cameron Curl, Cornelius Lucas, and Cody Barton. The only guy I could see them bringing back is going to be Cameron. Cameron Curl just because he has done a lot of good for the team he's not the best at forcing turnovers but I think outside of that he's very talented Samuel to me doesn't make sense because a team like the Chiefs I could see paying him big money whereas the commanders can just draft the receiver with all this capital so yeah that's what Washington has done so far in free agency and what I expect them to do in the draft